So Namaskar everyone, welcome to Honest Astrologer and today I have uh, Nitya Gopal Das Ji from ISKCON with me. He is also known as Gita Guide and uh, upon my request he agreed to talk about Gita and enlighten us towards the various aspects of it. So today is the first session of uh, Gopal Ji talking about uh, Gita. So we'll uh, discuss a few basic uh, peripheral things about it and then we'll go deep into it. So, sir, welcome back. The channel is yours. And, Thank uh, you very much, Vijayji, for inviting me. Uh, pleasure is all mine. So, today I'm going to quickly cut to chase. And a uh, lot of people last time said, case have parts may need allo. You better put it at one go. So, we'll have a half an hour video in which we will have a, a discussion and we'll upload it in one part. There are a lot of things, a lot of uh, aura around Gita. Kita, Gita, ye hai, wo hai. Uh, there are management courses based upon Gita. There are political discourses based upon Gita. Mere jaise ke palle nahi padte. Talking of a layman, we have wo do paanch na capsules le rakhe hain. Ki sab karm karo, phal ki chinta mat karo. Yeah, yada yada hi dharma se wo Mahabharat ke intro mein aata tha, pure desh ko yad ho gaya. Barring that, I don't think hum mein se koi bhi teen char shlok suna sakta hai. So, uh, I think it's very much necessary that people like you come forward, simplify it and take it to uh, people in general. So, for a common, what would be the importance of Gita? What's, what's the relevance of Gita? How would you describe that? So, if you see in our modern time, especially today, this day and age, we understand that Bhagavad Gita is for old people. We oh. understand, generally we have this culture, so when somebody is dying, we read Bhagavad Gita. Oh, yes. Because many times people think that if we keep Bhagavad Gita at our place, then there is going to be Mahabharata at our house. Many of them have this kind of misconceptions. Okay. So if you see, many people, this ideology that Bhagavad Gita is only for old people mm -hmm. is a very big myth what all of us developed it. Yeah. If you see, we can compare Bhagavad Gita with a manual of human life. Mm -hmm. For an example, if I am using any new, new device, but if I don't have its manual, I cannot use it to its optimal capacity. Good point. So... I just remember one of like my grandmother recently purchased one Android phone mm -hmm. and for her phone means only talking mm -hmm. but when she understood what all different things we can do with the Android phone we can do video calling we can do we can see a lot of movies we can uh, we can do a plethora of things with the mobile with the mobile phone mm -hmm. just because she was ignorant about what all thing we can do with the mobile phone she will underutilize it so, with every new device, there is a manual given with this. Especially in US, if you see, here is a culture of DIY, do it by yourself. Yeah. But if you don't have its manual, a person would take 100 days to just assemble one simple uh, cabinet. But True. if there is a manual given along with that, a specific instruction, how it should go about, then it is at like two, two to three hour job. Right. Similarly, everything has its own manual. So, what about the manual of human form of life? We have we have a very special type of cognitive power which has been given to us. Yes. But, but is it for the same purpose? What other people, other species would do? No. So, to be able to understand the real value of human life, we have to understand it from its manual. Mm. And Bhagavad Gita can be compared to the manual of human form of life. And manual is to be read in the beginning when we start using it, not in the end point of the time. Right. Let's say if two-year warranty period, if you if you're using the manual at the end of warranty period, no no fun doing it. Right. Similarly, people who say, "Let me read Gita when I'm dying, when I'm becoming," there's yeah. no there's no meaning to it. And it is more, all the more it is a it's spiritual education. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And this sort of education is to be started from the beginning of their life. When you said that, I have seen uh, if somebody dies in the family, people start uh, you know, reading Gita near the body. And it's a good emotional gesture that people want to tell Gita. But I think it makes more sense that what So what's, what's so special about this thing? Matlab, 
what is it that so special about gita even in hindus we have a lot of books we are lucky that way we have everything from like shiv mahapuran to upanishads to the vedas to uh, puranas and all that uh, why is gita always so so special yeah so before that i wanted to con- convey one more point about how this manual of human form of life act in our life for mm-hmm. an example you want to move forward let's say you are in jaipur now you want to go from jaipur to delhi and you don't know the route i so don't want to go to delhi for an example Sorry. let's say you want to go to <laughs> yeah. let's say vrindavan okay go okay uh, vrindavan you i want to go yeah. from, you want to go from jaipur to vrindavan but mm-hmm. you have all the facilities in your car you have mm-hmm. the nice deck system you have nice comfortable seats you have like petrol in the car but your your car does not have a gps without gps no matter how much great facility you may have in the car it's of no use mm-hmm. similarly in our life if we don't have this guidance if we don't have this knowledge so no matter how much intelligent we are no matter how much wealthy we are no matter how much strong we are without guidance it doesn't make any sense right it it act as a compass in a ship because ship may have all those facilities to live but if the ship does not know where it is leading to it does not make any sense Good. similarly Good. the bhagavad gita is like a compass is like a gps is like a manual of human form of life so this is one thing which really gives how much relevant how much important bhagavad gita in our life and coming back to the next point what you just mentioned about speciality of bhagavad gita i would like to give a real time example for us to illustrate that mm-hmm. for an example very profound like you have a profound knowledge about astrology and some of your very near and dear one come to you and you have read all the different aspect of astrology how houses work how sign works how planets are how conjunction everything you know about astrology Yes. so if a, if a, if your near and dear one comes to you and then he is in very very dangerous situation he is in very like dire need of some guidance mm. and you are, you are very close to that person so don't you think you will be using the best of the knowledge of astrology to be able to guide him right who would use the best of the guidance use the mature knowledge of astrology to be able to give to that person yes sir that he can be helped immediately because you have those emotional attachment with that person yes okay. similarly if we see to whom krishna is speaking bhagavad gita arjun arjun who is arjun he is his friend dear friend and he says bhakto se main sakha cheti you are my greatest devotee you are my best friend you are my sakha and arjuna was in dire need of knowledge was in dire need of guidance he was just his hand was shivering if you study first chapter of bhagavad gita Yeah. what was his status like his hand is shivering is crying he is not able to you know uh, stand to himself and he just just simply like you know completely flabbergasted in that in that way right so then he surrendering to krishna please guide me what should i do so don't you think what krishna would be speaking would be a different level of knowledge and will be more churned out more most mature knowledge krishna will be giving to arjuna and there's a verse which comes in gita mahatmya which uh, mm-hmm. i think uh, uh, shankaracharya or shiva told to their disciple it says sarva upanishado gavo dogda gopal nandanah pato vasta sudir bhokta dugdam gita amrita maha in this verse it is said that sarva upanishado gavo upanishad we have puranas we have upanishad so all the upanishad sarva upanishado gav compare all the upanishad to be cow if you compare all the upanishads to be cow then who is dogda who is who is milking the cow is krishna who is milking the cow gopal okay. nandana yeah and who is because if you see why the gopal why the dogda dogda gopala will get the milk from the cow mm. or who will induce him unless there is a vatsa unless there is a calf thing one one small kid of a cow which will induce cow to give milk so arjuna is the one inducing Ar- krishna to churn all the vedic literatures to churn all the upanishads mm-hmm. like cow and what is the milk which is coming out of it knowledge milk is bhagavad gita yeah if you see if you if you think all the another example can be if you think all the 
Upanishads to be different fruits. Uh-huh. And you are putting into a grinder and you are making juice out of it. The most okay. Okay. important essence. So all the Upanishads is being churned out to give the best of the knowledge, the most important jewels of 700 slokas which is being given to us. Because okay. Krishna knows in this age we cannot go through all those vast huge amount of knowledge which is given in the Vedas. So for us, he has kind of put Arjuna into illusion so that he can act as a why media for him to give knowledge and him to give this essence of knowledge so that we can implement immediately. That's what the very speciality of Bhagavad Gita stands out in all the Vedic literatures. People say that Gita is very powerful. Uh, I understand there are scriptures which can uh, inspire you. So the power of scripture is in the inspiration. Inspired by Mahabharat. Before Mahabharat, I was a typical, you know, self-hating Hindu type of a person. The uh, era we grew up in, right? You were not very proud of being a Sanatani Hindu. And uh, you doubted everything and whatever. I don't want to get into the politics of it. So Mahabharat uh, changed my perspective. Okay. How is it? And Gita, it is said that it is like uh, the next level of the power. Uh, how does how does Gita empower a person? What's what's the power of Gita? So basically, I would like to relate this power of Bhagavad Gita with the power of Mother Ganges. Mm-hmm. It is said that how powerful Mother Ganges is in our in our Sanatan culture. We know that if anybody takes bath in Ganges, his sins is he's purified out of all, all of his sins. Anybody who lives nearby Mother Ganges, they get benefited in multiple ways. Mm-hmm. Anybody who takes bath, they get benefited. We can feel the immediate refreshing, that immediate refreshing energy which comes out of taking bath in Mother Ganges. Mm-hmm. And all the places Mother Ganges flows, they will become Tithisthalas. They will become place of pilgrimages. Yeah. Right? So if you see, what is the origin of Mother Ganges? Gangotri. If you go back to the Puranas, the okay. Vamantera. Ba- Bhagirathi. Uh, Bhagirathi is one example. But actually, how how in the even in the heaven, Mother Ganges appeared? Okay. If you see, there is a story which is given in Bhagavatam. Vamandev, dwarf Brahmana, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. who went to the Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj, yeah. yeah, yeah. And Bali Maharaj, uh, Guru was Shukracharya. Yes. Shukra, yes, yes. Venus. So the Vamandev in the form of dwarf Brahmana, because what happened is Bali Maharaj was performing great tapasya, was yes. performing great homa. He was a detya. And jay. Shukracharya is a Shukracharya, if you see, the meaning of Shukra means semen. And uh-huh. he's a guru out of semen, means seminal guru. Okay. It means okay. this Bali Maharaj was performing great austerities, performing great yagnas because of guidance died, guided by Shukracharya. So Indra uh-huh. become confused, Indra become perplexed uh-huh. because it's a kind of insecurity even they have in themselves. Yeah. That what if this Bali Maharaj takes over me, I am going to be for no nowhere in the in the world. Then mm-hmm. he prays to Vishnu. Vishnu says, okay, I will take care of it. Mm-hmm. So Vishnu takes incarnation as Vamandev. Mm-hmm. Vamandev, as a dwarf Brahmana, goes and asks from Bali Maharaj to give three steps of land to him. Yes. Then, what are you talking about three steps of land? So I'll give you whatever you want. So, okay, get it. I, I grant you this boon. Then Shukracharya told from behind. That what are you doing? You know, he's a Vishnu in the gap of this Brahmana. He was very intelligent. And he's gonna take over complete property from you, complete entire whatever you have mm. in your possession. Mm. It's okay, because I'm a king and this Brahmana came, I cannot say no. So he just granted the boon. It is said that that dwarf Brahmana becomes so extensive that in one leg he covers the entire lower planetary system. In the second leg, second feet, he covers the entire upper planetary system. If it you see. The Mother Ganges is a river which is flowing outside the universe, known as Virajini mm-hmm. River, if you go mm-hmm. more into the detail. So, this it has a covering, seven layer of covering outside this universe. Mm-hmm. So, the feet, the toes of Vamandev pierces through the layers of all the universes, which is given in fifth canto of Bhagavatam. And all the river, that water, spills out in this universe, a drop of it, washing down the feet of Vamandev. And that wow. becomes Mother Ganges. So Mother Ganges have a power to purify the sins because it is coming by washing down the feet of Vishnu. 
ganges Mm-hmm. our sin be- our sin become purified it's not simple tendency which we get purified from mm-hmm. that's the people keep on committing sin even though they taking bath in ganges so ganges have a power to wash out the sin of a person not simple mentality the mm-hmm. gita which is coming from lotus mouth of krishna it has power to negate and to remove the simple tendency itself if you see the how we act we act only because what we think our belief system forces us to act in a certain way we have certain irrational belief system illogical belief system what we have developed over a period of time <coughs> which we known as, known as samskaras because yeah. of those samskaras in the chittam we act in a simple way so it is only by removing that outer layer of simple reaction is not going to help us mm-hmm. it is we have to work on the deeper layer of it and once we remove the root of it then the flower will not come the the fruit the 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 sour fruit will not come of papa karma right. which we suffer from right. Right. so by understanding diving deep into the knowledge of bhagavad gita we bathe our consciousness we bathe our internal world we bathe our mind we bathe our intellect is a bathing which we give to ourselves great great so by this we become refreshed we become purified and the all the cause of misery goes away from our life excellent sir excellent now uh, one question that some people might have and i have come across this question uh, people say ke bas geeta belongs to hindus only and other uh, religions people need not study that so you live in the usa a lot of christians around you uh, and i have seen that west has shown a lot of interest in geeta so what are what are your views about this thing if you see what krishna was teaching to arjuna if you if you study entire bhagavad gita i have studied about to five times now wow. and each and every word if you study deeply there is not even not even a single place where krishna says the word hindu not even a single place krishna says the word hindu it means krishna did not mean to give this knowledge only to hindus so there are universal principles for an example if in an area let's say i will i live in new jersey area near new york city area in that area there is a storm warning or a storm is going to come mm-hmm. so is it only for hindu or is it only for christian or is it only for uh, jewish it is only it is for everyone right if snow comes snow hits it is going to impact everybody mm-hmm. because that is a natural phenomena if it's raining it will be raining for everybody rain will not differentiate oh that is a hindu place there is a christian place there is a muslim place i will differentiate based upon them like this similarly if natural natural principles universal principle does not differentiate with whom they are interacting with okay. the law of karma astrology yeah. works with everybody 